Density Functional Perturbation Theory, DFPT, is employed to develop a novel, computationally efficient, and accurate first principles methodology for calculating natural optical activity, NOAA. NOAA, a property of certain structures that rotate the plane of polarization of light passing through them, has garnered significant research interest. However, a systematic and efficient methodology for computing NOAA has been lacking. The author's approach addresses this gap by incorporating self-consistent field, SCF, terms, crucial for accurate calculations, and avoiding troublesome summations over empty states. The methodology is based on long-wave density functional perturbation theory, expressing the final result in terms of response functions to uniform field perturbations. This approach is validated by computing the NOAA tensor for representative chiral crystals, trigonal Se, alpha HGS, and alpha CO2, and molecules, C4H4O2, yielding excellent agreement with experimental and previous theoretical calculations. The methodology overcomes limitations of previous works, such as the treatment of self-consistent fields and the need for cumbersome sums over empty states. Notably, the approach is equally valid for molecules and extended solids, enabling the study of systems that were previously inaccessible. The implementation within the Abinet code leverages the capabilities of the recently implemented long-wave module to efficiently calculate the NOAA tensor. The author's approach offers a significant advancement in the field, providing a robust and efficient tool for investigating NOAA in a wide range of systems. By avoiding the need for cumbersome sums over empty states and incorporating SCF terms, the methodology enables accurate calculations of NOAA, even for complex systems. The validation of the approach through comparison with experimental and previous theoretical calculations demonstrates its reliability and accuracy. The paper delves into the calculation of the natural optical activity tensor and its relationship to the optical rotatory power in non-dissipative systems. It begins by expanding the dielectric function in powers of the wave vector Q, which leads to the definition of the natural optical activity tensor as the first derivative of the dielectric function with respect to Q. This tensor is then rearranged into the gyration tensor, which is real and symmetric in crystals with time reversal symmetry. In the context of a crystal structure with the point group 32, where the optical axis is oriented along the Z direction, the optical rotatory power is given by the expression involving the component G33 of the gyration tensor. The authors then turn their attention to the low frequency limit of the dielectric function, which can be expressed as a second derivative of the ground state energy with respect to two spatially modulated electric fields. This allows for the calculation of the natural optical activity tensor as the first derivative of the dielectric function with respect to Q. The expression for the natural optical activity tensor is further broken down into terms involving electrostatic and wave function responses, as well as self-consistent field, SCF, potential responses. The paper concludes with a detailed explanation of the third line of the equation, which involves the wave function and SCF potential responses. The overall goal of the paper is to provide a comprehensive framework for calculating the natural optical activity tensor and its implications for the optical rotatory power in non-dissipative systems. In condensed matter physics, the gyrotropy tensor is a fundamental quantity that can be calculated within the context of density functional perturbation theory, DFPT. The authors of this research paper present a theoretical framework for computing the gyrotropy tensor which involves expressing the wave function response to an electromagnetic vector potential as a sum of symmetric and antisymmetric contributions, denoted by S and A, respectively. These objects are defined in terms of second derivatives in K-space and wave function responses to uniform orbital magnetic fields. The author's formulation offers several advantages, including the avoidance of cumbersome summations over unoccupied states, independence from the choice of origin, and gauge invariance. Self-consistent field, SCF, terms naturally appear in their formalism. The derived expression for the gyrotropy tensor, equation, 11, is investigated for uniqueness, and it is found that two inequivalent definitions can differ at most by a vanishing Brillouin zone integral. The authors identify the k-derivative of the macroscopic dielectric tensor as a possible choice for combining the individual pieces in equation, 11, to yield the total k derivative of some function f, k. 
By applying the 2n plus 1 theorem, they derive an alternative expression for the gyrotropy tensor. Equation 19, which is consistent with equation 11 to a high degree of accuracy. This implies that the definition of the gyrotropy tensor is not unique and can be modified by adding a dimensionless constant times equation 18. The arbitrariness in the definition is attributed to the electromagnetic gauge freedom and the Berry curvatures in the parameter space spanned by a uniform magnetic field and electric field are insensitive to the choice of coordinate origin and wave function gauge. The symbol W is expressed in a Landau gauge, which can be switched to obtain alternative expressions for the gyrotropy tensor. The author's first principles calculations are performed using the open source Abinit package and display a remarkably fast convergence with respect to the main computational parameters. The authors present a comprehensive study on the calculation of the gyration tensor and optical rotatory power in trigonal crystals in an isolated molecule using density functional perturbation theory. The calculations are performed within the framework of local density approximation, LDA, and generalized gradient approximation, GGA, parametrizations. Tables I and II show the results for the independent components of the gyration tensor and optical rotatory power demonstrating a good agreement with literature values, even when neglecting self-consistent field, SCF, terms. However, the authors emphasize the crucial importance of local field SCF contributions, consistent with previous studies. A comparison between LDA and GGA parametrizations is presented in Table 2, revealing a relatively small influence on the calculated coefficients, except for the G33 component of SAE, where the deviation reaches 50%. The authors also investigate the impact of structural parameters on the results, finding a significant effect on the final result. They then focus on the isolated molecule C4H402, presenting the computed gyration tensor and optical rotatory parameter in Table 3. The results show a significant impact of SCF terms on some components, and the computed optical rotatory parameter agrees well with a previously reported value. The study demonstrates the importance of considering SCF contributions and structural parameters in the calculation of the gyration tensor and optical rotatory power. The authors also discuss formal aspects of the theory, including the non-uniqueness of the equation for the gyration tensor, which is related to the gauge freedom of electromagnetism. The calculations are performed using a formulation of optical dispersion within the framework of density functional perturbation theory bringing the first principles calculation of the gyration tensor to the same level of accuracy and computational ease as standard linear response properties. The equations used in the study include the optical rotatory parameter equation, which relates to the rotatory power via a formula involving the Avogadro number and molar mass of the molecule. The authors report the computed value of the optical rotatory parameter, which matches a previously reported value. This study provides a comprehensive analysis of the gyration tensor and optical rotatory power in trigonal crystals in an isolated molecule, demonstrating the importance of considering SCF contributions and structural parameters. The results are presented in tables and discussed in detail, providing a clear understanding of the calculations and their implications. Computing the optical activity of chiral crystals is crucial for understanding their properties and potential applications in various fields including optoelectronics, spintronics, and quantum computing. However, previous studies using linear response theory within the framework of density functional theory, DFT, are limited by their inability to capture the full range of frequencies and magnetic materials with broken time reversal symmetry. To address these limitations, a novel method is proposed, combining the quantum espresso package with a linear response theory for computing the optical activity of chiral crystals. This approach allows for the calculation of the optical activity tensor, which describes the material's response to an external electromagnetic field and is essential for understanding its chiral properties. The theoretical derivation of this method highlights the importance of considering the electric dipole, magnetic dipole, and electric quadrupole contributions to the optical activity tensor. The Berry curvature plays a crucial role in the computation of the optical activity, providing a gauge-invariant measure of the chiral properties of the material. 
The proposed method is demonstrated to be accurate and efficient through comparisons with experimental data and previous theoretical calculations. The computational details and results obtained using this new method are presented, showcasing its potential applications in the study of various chiral crystals, including those with broken time reversal symmetry. This novel approach enables a more accurate and efficient prediction of the optical activity of chiral crystals, which is essential for understanding their properties and potential applications in various fields. The authors emphasize that their method can be used to study a wide range of chiral crystals, including those with complex magnetic structures and broken time reversal symmetry. The results obtained using this method are in good agreement with experimental data, demonstrating its accuracy and reliability. The proposed approach has the potential to become a valuable tool for researchers in the field of materials science and condensed matter physics, enabling a deeper understanding of the properties and behavior of chiral crystals. The computational study employs the Abinet package with the Purdue Wong parametrization of the Local Density Approximation, LDA, for Density Functional Theory, DFT, and Density Functional Perturbation Theory, DFPT, calculations. Norm conserving pseudopotentials from the Pseudo Dojo website are used. Regenerated without exchange correlation nonlinear core corrections using the ONCVPSP software. Spin orbit coupling is neglected in the first principles calculations. The materials studied, trigonal SE, alpha HGS, and alpha silicon oxide, belong to the point group 32 and may crystallize in two enantiomorphic structures with space groups P3121 and P3221. The P3121 space group structure is considered for the three crystals under study. The crystal structure is either set to the experimental one or relaxed to mechanical equilibrium until the forces are smaller than 10 to the power of 6 Ha, Bohr. A plane wave cutoff of 50 Ha is used for Se in alpha silicon oxide, and 40 Ha for alpha HGS. The results are found to be remarkably sensitive to this choice and the exchange correlation functional used in the structural relaxation. For C4H4O2, a box with sides of A equals 35 Bohr is used to simulate an isolated molecule, with a plane wave energy cutoff of 50 Ha. The effect of structural parameters and exchange and correlation functionals, LDA versus GGA, on the solids is examined. The structural parameters for different cases are presented, showing that GGA gives a larger unit cell when the forces are relaxed and, in general, a larger electronic band gap. The electronic band structure of Se, alpha HGS, and alpha silicon oxide is displayed, with four cases studied for Se. The non-relaxed structure and the relaxed structure, both with LDA and GGA. When the structure is relaxed with LDA, the band gap drastically decreases, becoming so small, around 0.2 electron volts, that even the top of the valence band and the bottom of the conduction band are not well defined. The study highlights the importance of considering the structural parameters and exchange correlation functionals in the calculation of the dielectric tensor and natural optical activity. The results demonstrate that the choice of functional and structural relaxation can significantly impact the electronic band structure and, consequently, the optical properties of the materials. The findings have implications for the understanding of the optical activity of chiral materials and the development of new materials with tailored optical properties. A comparison of structural parameters and electronic band gaps for Se, alpha HGS, and alpha silicon oxide using LDA and GGA functionals is provided in Table S2. The results show that the choice of exchange and correlation functional has a minimal impact on the dielectric tensor components. However, structural parameters significantly influence these components, particularly in the case of alpha HGS. This effect is further amplified when calculating the natural optical activity tensor which is the first-order derivative of the dielectric tensor with respect to Q. Table S3 highlights the comparison between LDA and GGA for the independent components of the dielectric permittivity tensor for these materials under different structures. The findings indicate that while individual contributions to the natural optical activity tensor can vary greatly, accidental cancellations can lead to similar final results for the tensor components. 
These results emphasize the importance of considering both the exchange and correlation functional and the structural parameters when conducting calculations involving dielectric tensors and natural optical activity tensors. The study underscores the need for careful consideration of these factors to achieve accurate results in computational materials science studies. The accurate prediction of dielectric tensors and natural optical activity tensors relies on the careful selection of exchange and correlation functionals, as well as a thorough understanding of the structural parameters that influence these tensors. The band structures of trigonal selenium, Se, and mercury sulfide, HGS, are computed using density functional theory, DFT, within the local density approximation, LDA, and generalized gradient approximation, GGA, frameworks. The calculations are performed along the high symmetry directions gamma mk gamma ala of the Brillouin zone. For trigonal SE, both non-relaxed and relaxed structures are investigated, where the relaxed structure is obtained by minimizing the total energy with respect to the lattice parameters. The computed band structures for SE, shown in figure S1, reveal a significant effect of lattice relaxation on the bandgap energy, decreasing by approximately 0.5 electron volts upon relaxation. In contrast, the band structure of HGS, presented in figure S2, exhibits a pronounced difference between LDA and GGA calculations. The LDA calculation yields a direct bandgap energy of approximately 0.5 electron volts while the GGA calculation results in an indirect bandgap energy of approximately 1.2 electron volts. This discrepancy highlights the importance of choosing a suitable exchange correlation functional for accurate bandgap calculations. The calculations employ a plane wave basis set in the projector augmented wave PA, method, with LDA and GGA exchange correlation functionals describing electronic interactions. The Brillouin zone is sampled using a Monkhorst pack grid, and the total energy is converged to within 10 to the power of 6 eV. Lattice parameters are optimized using a conjugate gradient algorithm. The results demonstrate the sensitivity of the bandgap energy to the choice of exchange correlation functional and lattice relaxation, providing valuable insights into the electronic properties of trigonal SE and HGS. These findings have implications for the design and optimization of optoelectric devices based on these materials. The electronic band structure of alpha silicon oxide, computed using the local density approximation, LDA, and generalized gradient approximation, GGA, reveals the material's energy bands plotted along high symmetry points in the Brillouin zone. To accurately compute the G33 tensor component, non-orthogonal atomic, NOAA, orbitals are employed, obtained by diagonalizing the overlap matrix. The contributions to the G33 tensor component from various terms, including ELST, X, Y, and W, are computed using the LDA and GGA exchange and correlation functionals. Results presented in Table S4 demonstrate that the choice of functional significantly affects the computed G33 values, with LDA generally producing smaller values compared to GGA. The alpha silicon oxide structure exhibits a relatively small G33 value, indicating weak anisotropy, whereas alpha HGS shows a larger G33 value, indicating stronger anisotropy. The importance of using the correct exchange and correlation functional is highlighted, as it can significantly impact the computed values. The use of NOAA orbitals allows for a more accurate computation of the G33 tensor component taking into account the non-orthogonality of atomic orbitals. Convergence of the natural optical activity tensor is assessed for trigonal SE, beta HGS, and beta silicon oxide, focusing on the independent components of the gyration tensor, G11 and G33. The study examines the effect of plane wave cutoff energy and K points mesh resolution on the numerical results, as illustrated in figures S4, S5, and S6. Trigonal SE utilizes the experimental structure with both local density approximation, LDA, and generalized gradient approximation, GGA, while beta HGS and beta silicon oxide employ a relaxed structure, with forces converged to less than 10 carat, 6, ha, bore using LDA or GGA. The computed results are compared with those obtained using the Purdue-Burkerns or Hoff, PBE, 
parametrization of the GGA. Figure S4 shows the convergence of G11 and G33 for non-relaxed trigonal say with respect to plane wave cutoff and K-point mesh density, with the top panel representing LDA and the bottom panel representing GGA. The plots demonstrate that the gyration tensor components converge with increasing plane wave cutoff energy and K-point mesh resolution. This convergence study highlights the importance of adequate convergence of the plane wave cutoff energy and K-point mesh resolution to obtain accurate results for the natural optical activity tensor. The findings validate the method and ensure the reliability of the computed natural optical activity tensors for the studied materials. The analysis presented on this page delves into the convergence of independent components of the gyration tensor, specifically G11 and G33, for HGS as a function of the plane wave cutoff and the density of the K-point mesh. The top panel showcases the results obtained using the local density approximation, LDA, while the bottom panel illustrates the results obtained using the generalized gradient approximation, GGA. The convergence of these components is pivotal in understanding the structural properties of HGS, which can be influenced by various computational parameters such as the plane wave cutoff and the K-point mesh. By examining the variation of G11 and G33 as a function of these parameters, researchers can determine the optimal conditions for accurate simulations. In the LDA results, the gyration tensor components exhibit a clear convergence trend with increasing plane wave cutoff and K-point density. This suggests that the structural properties of HGS are well defined within the LDA framework, provided sufficient computational resources are allocated. In contrast, the GGA results display a more complex behavior, indicating that the convergence may not be as straightforward in this approximation. The use of both LDA and GGA allows for a comprehensive comparison between different exchange correlation functionals, providing insights into their strengths and limitations for describing the properties of HGS. This comparative study is essential for selecting the most appropriate computational approach for future investigations. Furthermore, the figure provides valuable information for researchers aiming to optimize their computational setup for studying HGS or similar systems. By observing the convergence patterns, they can adjust their parameters to achieve the desired level of accuracy while minimizing computational costs. In conclusion, this page offers a thorough examination of the convergence of gyration tensor components in HGS shedding light on the interplay between computational parameters and structural properties. The findings presented here contribute to the ongoing efforts to refine computational methodologies in solid-state physics and materials science. The convergence of independent components of the gyration tensor, specifically G11 and G33, of CO2, is analyzed with respect to the plane wave cutoff energy, ECUT, and the density of the K-point mesh. Using the local density approximation, LDA, G11 and G33 are plotted against the plane wave cutoff energy, ECUT, ranging from 20 to 60 Ha, with an 8 by 8 by 8 K point mesh. The data reveals a convergent behavior for both G11 and G33, with G11 converging to approximately 0.13 and G33 converging to around 0.17. In contrast, using the generalized gradient approximation, GGA, similar convergent behavior is observed for both G11 and G33, with G11 converging to approximately 0.166 and G33 converging to around 0.174. The results highlight the significance of considering the convergence of the gyration tensor components with respect to the plane wave cutoff energy and the K-point mesh density, as it affects the accuracy of the results. The comparison between LDA and GGA approximations emphasizes the importance of choosing an appropriate exchange correlation functional, as it yields distinct converged values of G11 and G33. The Sternheimer equation describes the response of a wave function to a long wavelength magnetic vector potential field, involving the ground state Hamiltonian, unperturbed energy eigenvalues, and the conduction band projector. The perturbing operator can be divided into symmetric and antisymmetric parts with respect to momentum exchange, recovering the usual wave functions and responses to uniform orbital magnetic fields, respectively. This division allows for the verification of specific equations in the main text. 
In the context of natural optical activity without self-consistency, the optical activity tensor is defined as the imaginary part of a complex quantity, calculated as an integral over the Brillouin zone. The wave function term in this calculation consists of three components. The first order wave function, the first order wave function with a magnetic field, and the second order wave function. These components are derived from the unperturbed wave functions, Hamiltonian, and magnetic field operators. This section establishes a formal link between the long wave density functional perturbation theory, DFPT, based expression for natural optical activity and the formulas obtained in REF. 10. For finite systems. The starting point is the expression for the first order wave functions, which are solved using the Sternheimer equation, including self consistency via the usual self consistent field, SCF, potential. The tilted first order wave functions are obtained by excluding the SCF potential term. The natural optical activity tensor, tilde, is directly related to the Tevin part of the first Q gradient of the effective conductivity tensor computed in REF. 10. This relationship is established through equation, 32, which connects the two expressions. The first order wave functions are expressed in full generality as a sum over occupied and empty bands, as shown in equation, 33. For finite samples, the Hamiltonian and momentum operators are expressed in terms of the position operator, as shown in equations, 34, and, 35. The expression for tilde ZKE is derived connecting the natural optical activity tensor to the effective conductivity tensor. This refined version maintains the technical accuracy and depth of the original content while making it more concise and suitable for voiceover narration. The paper delves into the computation of the expectation value of the commutator between the Hamiltonian and the momentum operator for a given quantum state, psi. This computation is pivotal in understanding the behavior of the system under study. The authors initiate their computation by expanding the expectation value using the definition of the momentum operator and the Hamiltonian, leading to expressions involving sums over occupied and empty states. They then introduce the notation tilde w, k as a measure of the weight of the state, psi on the kth band. This notation is used to simplify the expression for the expectation value resulting in an equation that involves the square of the matrix elements between the occupied and empty states. To further simplify the computation, the authors decompose the expectation value into two parts, a symmetric part and an anti-symmetric part. The symmetric part, denoted as S1, is simplified using the properties of the Hamiltonian and momentum operators. It is shown that S1 can be expressed in terms of the commutator between the Hamiltonian and the momentum operator which is then further simplified to involve only the occupied states. The anti-symmetric part, denoted as S2, is also simplified, but this time, only terms involving conduction band states on the left survive. The final expressions for S1 and S2 are provided, setting the stage for further analysis and discussion in the subsequent sections of the paper. The mathematical formulation of the wave function response is crucial in understanding its behavior and dependence on various parameters. The authors begin by collecting terms, denoted as S, A, S, B, and S2, which yields the equation HLJ caret oxygen monosulfide, JMI. Expanding this equation reveals the geometric contribution to the wave function response, resulting in a purely geometric term, HLJ caret oxygen monosulfide, JMI, dependent on the difference between L and M. The antisymmetric part, denoted as HLJ caret OA, JMI, is broken down into two components, A1 and A2. The A1 term is expanded to reveal a series of terms, which are simplified through mathematical operations, resulting in an expression dependent on L, M, and the wave function response. The A2 term is also expanded, but some terms vanish due to the presence of a conduction band state on the left, resulting in an expression dependent on M and the wave function response. Combining the A1 and A2 terms yields the complete anti-symmetric contribution, HLJ caret OA, JMI. Introducing a new variable, V equals I, caret H, R, allows for further simplification, resulting in the final expression presented in equation, 51. This expression depends on L, M, and the wave function response, highlighting the critical role of these parameters in understanding the wave function response. 
The mathematical derivations in this section are essential in understanding the behavior of the wave function response and its dependence on the symmetric and antisymmetric parts of the expression. The results have significant implications for the field of study, particularly in understanding the properties of materials and their behavior under various conditions. The symmetric and antisymmetric contributions to the W. K term are computed using equation 37, resulting in a sum of terms involving the OS and OA operators, as well as the PR and PR operators. Commutation relations between these operators are employed to combine the terms, and the expression is further simplified using the fact that P caret plus Q caret equals 1. The final expression for the tensor is obtained by combining all the terms and leveraging the properties of the IM operator. The resulting expression, given by equation, 55, is identical to the one derived in ref. 10. It represents the natural optical activity tensor for finite samples, and its derivation involves several key steps. These include computing the symmetric and antisymmetric contributions to the W, K term, utilizing commutation relations between the operators, and simplifying the resulting expression using the fact that P caret plus Q caret equals 1. The final expression is obtained by combining all the terms and leveraging the properties of the IM operator. The expression for the tensor is given by equals 4 pi SIM omega XM L omega L omega M squared less than HMJR JLHILJ R times VR times versus JMI greater than I omega L omega M less than HMJR JLHILJR times VR times versus JMI greater than this expression represents the natural optical activity tensor for finite samples, and its derivation is based on the use of the OS and OA operators, as well as the PR and PR operators. The commutation relations between these operators are employed to simplify the resulting expression, and the fact that P caret plus Q caret equals 1 is used to further simplify the expression. The optical rotatory parameter for finite systems, such as molecules, is typically expressed as the sum of the diagonal components of the two rank gyration tensor g this tensor is derived from the three rank optical activity tensor tilde by contracting an index with the levi savita symbol the resulting gyration tensor g enables the calculation of the rotatory parameter which is a function of molecular properties this calculation involves a series of mathematical manipulations including the application of quantum mechanics principles the use of matrix elements, and the Levi Savita symbol. The rotatory parameter is crucial for understanding the interaction between light and matter in chiral molecules. This work builds upon previous research in the field, including studies on the exchange correlation functional, the Tuarank gyration tensor, and the optical rotatory parameter. By leveraging these concepts, the present study provides a comprehensive framework for understanding the optical properties of finite systems. The calculation of the rotatory parameter involves a detailed understanding of the gyration tensor and its relationship to the optical activity tensor. This is achieved through a series of mathematical operations, including tensor contractions and the application of quantum mechanical principles. The resulting equation for the rotatory parameter is a powerful tool for understanding the behavior of light in chiral molecules. This research contributes to the ongoing development of a comprehensive theory of optical activity, with implications for fields such as materials science, chemistry, and physics.